I'll just say I used to watch a lot of Steve Dangle, and I watched it again for the first time in a while. Like, <laughs> this is the saltiest man on the face of the earth, and he just when it comes to the Islanders, this guy just he he just like lies. He's like, <laughs> oh well, we run your show in the regular season. They're like six and five against the Islanders since Tavares got there. Like he's he's just so salty, he gets blinded. Steve, I, I would like to think I don't have that happen. <laughs> you hear also, that, Steve? The Islanders have been pretty good in the time that we've been doing this. Yeah, that's true. That's true, and that's why we can never stop <laughs> because we had <laughs> one or two magical runs yeah. since we started doing this, and you never know. And also, I don't think I ever like count like uh, I don't think I ever was like, yeah, we were better than Tampa Bay, like. No, like I don't know. He he's he's annoying, and I'm I'm so tired of him. <laughs> Hear that, Steve? <laughs> you know what? He must be doing something right because I like to listen to it and then disagree with him. There you go. Hello, and welcome back to Belmont Bunch. Today we're going to be talking about the past couple weeks of Islanders hockey and where they stand in the wild card race with just three weeks left in the season. <laughs> You know, super excited that the Islanders are fun and good right now. Uh, we have five games to talk about, um, starting with Washington, um, then L.A., Anaheim, San Jose, Toronto. Interesting stretch um, coming off of the Detroit, Buffalo, Pittsburgh wins, which were all basically playoff games for us. Uh, I think we had even said on the last pod that uh, the Washington game, you know, it would be nice to win, but it wouldn't be the end of the world if we lost it. They do lose. It sucks. Engvall. Um, it's, it's because we didn't hope hard enough. That's why they didn't win. <laughs> you have to vote harder. No, no, um, hope. It's because we didn't hope hard enough. No, vote. <laughs> okay. um, and uh, so uh, that, that first game, you know, Engvall got us off to a good start, and then they just kind of didn't have it from there. And, you know, um, I kind of chalked it up a little bit to maybe, you know, they had just won uh, a bunch of very important games. Um, I think they're they're not owed a letdown, but I'm not going to overreact to one loss. And uh, thankfully, I don't feel like I did overreact uh, to that loss because, despite you know that you know the score line looking so bad, um, I actually have been trusting uh, the team and also uh, Lane recently, and the team looks really engaged. Even in this loss, you know they came back. The L.A. game was very frustrating, uh, but I don't think you could say it was a lack of effort in the L.A. game. I think you could say it was a lack of composure because they took a bunch of penalties, uh, and it was veteran players that took them. So that can't happen. Um, I was getting a little bit nervous for a second there. You know, you drop back-to-back games in regulation after a bunch of big wins. Um, But for me, like, knowing that we had Anaheim and San Jose – I, I still wasn't jumping to conclusions. I was like, it's still a successful road trip uh, if you win those two games. And they gave up the goal, the first goal in each of those games. Um, but they didn't panic and they took care of business. It was, I think it was uh, abundantly clear how bad those teams are uh, in those games. But you cannot take away the Islanders score 10 goals in two games. They got the job done. Um, they continue to get it done without Barzi, uh, which – you know, I, I think that's just going to make them even scarier um, when Barzi does come back. And then they, oh man, the punctuation of that Toronto game, a huge game in terms of like playoff projections um, because the Islanders are seen to have an easier schedule than Florida and Pittsburgh the rest of the way. And it's just a matter of like pinching a few uh, wins in the tough games uh, and then taking care of business in easier ones. Uh, and starts off great um, with the the Toronto game. Sterling, what did you think of this uh, past week and a half, two weeks? Yeah, I've been loving it. So like you, I was I was a little upset by the Washington loss because I knew we were going into L.A., and that's a tough one. Um, but still didn't overreact to L.A. because they're really good. I was really afraid of them choking one of the games in – the rest of their road trip but first periods were both tough like you said they got the job done 
And then Toronto, I was also expecting a loss. But I thought the score was a bit more lopsided than the quality of the Islanders' play showed. I think they got some good breaks. But overall, I think they deserved to win it. Uh, They were doing the right things, crashing the goal a bunch, just getting pucks on net, hoping for deflections. Um, But there are still some worrying things, I think, that need to be addressed. Uh, The Sorokin save of the year, which we say every week, but from Toronto, uh, you have Romanov on the left side standing around, and Polak is taking care of a guy in front of the net, also towards the left side, which leaves, I think, Gustafson wide open on the back door. And you need to start taking care of those issues before playoff time. But offensively, the depth has been fantastic. Bo Horvat hasn't had like two points in 10 games, something like that. But we're still putting up loss of goals because of Hudson fashing. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. when Barzi comes back, I think Horvat will get going a bit. I just talked about how I was upset with the defense, but overall, I'm, I've am i always been optimistic. I'm even more so now. I think we got to take care of Columbus and Buffalo, but mm-hmm. if we could get two wins in that, I think I'm going to really start to believe that we're just in and we just need a couple more wins. Um, yeah. Okay, so... On that note, why don't what are your guys' updated playoff percentages? Like that we what are the what are the, was your updated percentage that we make it in? Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, we're in this as of recording this, and you know for a little while now we've been in the first wild card spot. Um, and then once we do that, we'll talk a little bit more about like the standings and the league is a little bit more outside. So uh, Sterling, why don't you start? Yeah, I think I was high before on like sixty or something. I'm only gonna go to seventy right now. I I am worried just like the Anaheim and San Jose games, but um, if we take care of those games, you can expect that percentage to jump to close to 100. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Tom, what do you think? You know, it's funny for me uh, as somebody that pays attention to moneypuck.com, which tracks this. And the good thing for me is I have been trying to form my own opinion on a percentage and then looking at money pucks. And being like, huh, that's, you know, curious. Um, And it's been really strange. I've been like right in line with them where I think, you know, as we've talked in in the the past few pods, it's gone up and up for me. And it seems to have gone up at the same exact rate as moneypuck.com has. Because I, and it's funny, I was saying this before even I I saw the, the latest from them. I'm going to look that up now, but in the meantime, I'm going to say mine is like 70% now. Like they, man, beating Toronto is a big deal. Um, Sterling's probably right about, you know, seven to two was like not completely indicative of, of the game. Um, you know, we were up three, two um, a few minutes into the third and, and did really pour it on. I, I, you know, I noticed Toronto um, who this year, Hasn't given up a lot of goals. They've been very good defensively um, and scores a lot of goals. I I thought we handled them really, really well. We didn't give up a ton of shots. We really didn't give up many chances after the uh, the second goal, which was a bit of a defensive breakdown. And like Sterling pointed out, you know, we got bailed out earlier by Sorokin. Unfortunately, like it's not something you want to say, but like that's going to happen against like teams like Toronto that are that dynamic and, we are going to have to rely a little bit on our goaltending in the playoffs. Um, I think they, the, like there's a saying with goalies where it's like, come playoff time, you need to make every save that, that you're expected to make and then steal some and make some that you're not expected to make. And Sorokin's been doing that. Um, you know, so right now, uh, I yeah, I'm at like 70. Uh, I think Money Puck has us close to that. I'm sure... You know, Florida is about to lose or has lost to Toronto in regulation tonight. Um, right now, as of it's literally on in the background, Pittsburgh is down one nothing after one. I think this would be a gigantic night in terms of playoff percentages for the Islanders. Um, but again, like like Sterling said, they can't the Islanders can't just, you know, treat it as job done. Um, they've done a lot of the work. 
and now they have to finish it off. It's kind of like um, when James and I went to high school, our final exam was 50% of our grade for the class. They've since changed that, of course, after we left. But it's incredible. It's not to the same extent, but like the amount of work you still have at the end. Yeah, it's like the uh, last you know, day, percent, but the last possible day of the class, <laughs> you know, is half yeah. of your grade. <laughs> yeah, and that was something I thought about as a student, and I'm kind of likening it to the Islanders now, where uh, as a student, you know, you would work for what ten months, nine months, and mm -hmm. you'd be like, "Wow, I just made up half my grade." Mm -hmm. and now the next three hours will determine the other half, and it's funny because the for the Islanders, it is pretty much to that level, um, you know. They've battled the whole year and they've battled especially well recently. And kind of like Sterling pointed out, it's not the like Brock's and it's well, Brock's been good overall for the year, but recently it's been the bottom six. And that gives you a lot of hope. And for me, it gets me irrationally excited because now I get to think of uh, the Islanders as currently constructed um, with Barzi. And with, you know, the top six actually getting stuff going, like the bottom six right now is on fire. Um, Cal had the two goals against Toronto, obviously. And that's big for Cal because we've all been, obviously Hudson Fashing has been big for us. And he, for a second there, it looked like Hudson Fashing made Cal completely irrelevant. And no, they've both been needed recently and they've done a great job. And now you know, when Barzi comes back, the depth that the Islanders have is actually worrying for other teams. You know, I was listening. We talked about before the pod. Uh, I was just listening to uh, Steve Dangle's podcast, and, like, they're actually legitimately worried about not just the Islanders, but teams like the Islanders, because those skilled teams like Toronto, where they might still be lacking the grit, man, that game the other night was like a playoff game, and that is not the way Toronto wants to see playoff games go. So, I think the Islanders are very, very well structured to take on a Toronto-like team. Um, but the problem is, in the East, I think a lot of teams are structured like the Islanders. Um, it's funny, as it stands right now, I think the Islanders, I would like their odds against like the Rangers or um, Toronto. Um, Boston, I you know, like I can't say that I'm expecting us to beat Boston if we do, because it would be a historic upset. Um, but I'm not counting it out. Also, we might not have to play Boston because, you know, if, if the Isles take care of business the rest of the way, they get the Canes. And the Canes are still a very good team, but they have had a tendency to flame out the playoffs. Um, usually not early, though. So they're usually pretty good in the first round. But I am very excited. My playoff percentage is 70%. And really, if they were to take – um, so I'm assuming we'll have four games before the next pod. Um, if we film next Thursday as well, Columbus, Buffalo, Jersey, Washington, half of those at home, half on the road, uh, with a back to back in there. I would love to see, let's see, a win against Columbus. Hey, you know, you'd love to beat Buffalo. It is the back end of a back to back, but Buffalo has really been struggling recently. So if you take both of those and then you beat Washington, that's a win. I mean, if you win three out of four, that's excellent. If you were to get two wins and a point, that probably is still fine. So, um, yeah, things are, things are like, I, you know, seven, I said 70% and that see, I hope that doesn't seem too sure. That is like just if they take care of business and I'm starting to be more confident that they can, because I'm seeing engagement from the players, and I think Lane's actually getting a handle of this. Uh, so there's about three weeks left uh, in the regular season. Uh, so we've said kind of the past two to three weeks, you know, like we kept on saying every week, like, oh, this week will like determine the season, you know? So yeah. I, is there any, do you guys think there's any more weeks like that left? Or, I mean, like, like or is it more like taking care of business, like just kind of staying the course? You know, like no more major wins are like really needed or like a set of major wins are really needed. So I don't know. What do you guys think? I think that this week is not as must win as the past couple weeks. And I know after this week we play 
Tampa twice and Carolina in the mix. So next week is going to be, you know, if you do poorly, whatever. Uh, So you want to take care of the games now. But Mm. they have been doing that recently. Like Tom said, I think five points, you're fine, which compared to that Pittsburgh week we just had, we were saying like, oh, if you win all the games, like that's what you need to do. Uh, So yeah, still should have a sense of urgency. Um, But yeah, I think next week, if we do poorly, don't overreact too much to that. Okay, yeah, Tom, what do you think? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off with something. Uh, so Sterling said we play Tampa twice, right? We have one uh, at home and one on the road. Um, I hope I'm not taking my eye off the ball too much, but I'm really curious to see how Tampa looks in those games, even oh, almost even more so than the Islanders, because as we were talking about just before we hopped on the pod, um, Tam- I'm curious to see. I think Tampa would not tank the games against the Islanders. Like people have wondered if Tampa is doing what they've done for the last couple of years and like take it a little bit easy before the playoffs because they've played so much playoff hockey that, you know, there's a lot of wear and tear on them. And so are they not taking the end of the regular season as seriously because they just want to make sure they're healthy. And I think the, the games against the Islanders could be revealing there because those are playoff. Like the Islanders play a playoff, type game in the playoff in the regular season even um so keep an eye on if tampa is uh actually cooked the islanders might (laughs) torch them in those games so keep an eye on that if you're interested in seeing you know if tampa's still engaged and if they could still do something in the playoffs for the islanders perspective um to answer your question in terms of big weeks left i mean every game is still big Um, They have put themselves in the spot at this point where they have control of their destiny, which is wonderful. So I think we've passed um, like that Detroit Buffalo Pittsburgh week is probably the biggest week um, because it helped eliminate teams, you know, like Detroit and Buffalo are are fully out of, um, you know, the rear view at this point. And that week was a gigantic part of that. Uh, For me, you're not like, there's not a lot of four point games left. There's a lot of tough games um, still on the schedule. Tampa twice. Uh, you never know with Washington, um, Jersey, Carolina. Yeah. So, like, there are still tough games on there. Um, I I think the toughest week left is probably the week of Jersey, Washington, Tampa, Carolina. And that's going to be an interesting one. And that's really, I think, for me, going to tell me – you know, how, especially playing against Carolina, Carolina still got stuff to play for because they want to win the division and get, you know, whatever seating, get to play a wild card instead of, you know, one of the Metro teams. So um, teams are going to have stuff to play for. It's going to be informative. I'm going to be especially paying attention to it because I love my bracket and I love bracket season. And uh, for me, uh, I will be paying heavy attention to the Tampa and Carolina games and the Jersey game because all those games are going to matter to both teams. And I think it's going to makes my uh, playoff predictions a little bit easier to make when teams play such important games towards the end of the year, you get to know where they are. I Who's think, the Islanders, up, you know, as you saw in the Toronto game the other night, the Islanders have a sense of urgency right now. And I think, yeah, does it help playing against Toronto? And it's like, You know, you're playing every time they've played Tavares since he left. Like, it feels like they've had something to prove. Um, You know, Steve Dangle wants to pretend that they've destroyed the Islanders since 2018. (laughs) Sure, there's six six wins, five losses. So, yeah. Um, You hear that, Steve? Yeah. (laughs) We've been around. When you listen to this, write in. Okay. And tell us what you did. to a Belmont Bunch thing once. Or, you know, I replied to him and then he replied to me. That was interesting. I don't really remember what it was about. To be honest, but no, wait, uh, you you meant like you left a comment on his video? No, like uh, he he tweeted something. I responded, oh. and then he like responded to my. Uh, you reply, guys are like besties. which is cool. <laughs> I mean, like, look, it, it was a nice back. I I feel like he can be ninety five percent of the time uh, objective or not objective, but like reasonable. But when when they lose to the Islanders, he loses that. 
And um, yeah, it's it's funny. Okay. I, a lot of Toronto fans do that. I don't even know what percentage of, of Islander fans anymore really like care all that much about the you know like the chance in the arena, like the we don't need you. Mm-hmm. I think it's literally just because we've noticed that it gets to Toronto fans, and it's like, well, let's just keep this up. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's plenty of people that still like. Uh, are they're like JT? You're a you're a traitor. You're a snake. You know, it's a Long Island accent, but a- as we talked about a while back, I think we've I think a lot of us have gotten past that, and it's more of like a funny thing now. Mm-hmm. And look, it's a fun atmosphere in the arena um, for Islander fans. I feel like always, but it's especially fun when you have something to root against rather mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. you know. So it, it just adds something, and I think that's fun. Okay, so anyway, my long winded answer is. Um, <laughs> Next next week is going to be really really interesting. Oh, wow, what a unique take! Next week will determine <laughs> the season. <laughs> I, I don't even think it'll. De- I, well, I mean, like, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I I boiled it's... down. I took the essence of what you said. I boiled it down and I stole the meaning. Well, to boil it down even more, very uh, essentially, if the Islanders beat playoff teams in the next week, they're going to be in a really good position because they'll still have some non playoff teams left. Two of the last three games are Philly and Montreal. Uh, okay, so uh, speaking of then the playoffs, you're talking about your bracket and and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, let's talk a little more generally about the league and you know like uh, how other teams are doing. Who might clinch next? Mm-hmm. So Boston has clinched. Yeah, yeah. and South Carolina in the East. Yeah. So uh, okay, so. Um. Well, I guess we'll stick with the East just because we've been talking about them. Then we'll do a little talk a little bit about the West. So sure. let's start with the East. So yeah, where do you guys think? If do you guys think then any of the teams that are in, you know, you think they're going to shuffle around? You think the seating's pretty much set? I don't any know. What ideas? do you think? Really? I think Toronto, Tampa is a lock for a series. Mm-hmm. Uh. I have a gut feeling we see Devils, Rangers. I don't think the Devils can climb into first, especially with the games in hand. Um, I think for the wild card race, like I said, I gave the Islanders a 70% chance. Pittsburgh, I still think, has no goaltending, mm-hmm. but I do think they've acquired enough points already to be in a decent position like Tristan Jari uh, somehow was hurt today even though he played all of last night and they called up Dustin Tokarski and I think that's a better option honestly so, uh, <laughs> especially uh, against uh, the Islanders uh, Jari's got a thing against yeah, the Islanders absolutely Florida I mean it's tough they were on an insane hot run and then they dropped their last two games goaltending has been an issue defense has been an issue but I think Matthew Kachuk could still uh, put the team on his back and then the other team I want to talk about is Washington they're in a weird spot I'm pretty sure they're out they did just get John Carlson back today but I would say that if we take even one of the last two games against them I think us getting the two points and there only be only being like 10 games left in the season. I think that they, they have no shot if we could get one of those wins. And I already think they're pretty much out, but you never know. Maybe Carlson makes the defense that much better. Um, so overall, I'm guessing Islanders as of now will play Carolina and then Pittsburgh will play Boston. Which is sad because if people remember, I was Isles X Cat. I would love to see the Panthers get in, but I'm not too sure about them. Yeah. Well, hopefully Dallas will do um, Florida a favor tonight. I'm rooting for Florida to get in just because I think I, I just want to see teams that aren't Pittsburgh in the playoffs. I honestly, like at this point, I'm not really sure with Florida, like if they stand any chance against Boston. Um, just because the, you know, it, it's tough. They don't have Spencer Knight anymore. I hope he's doing well with uh, the players assistance program. Um, Alex Lyon is not going to win them a Boston series. So they really, really are going to need Bob to be incredible. Um, 
and, and obviously they have to get into the playoffs first. Um, I ag- agree. Toronto, Tampa Bay looks like it's just straight up going to be a series. And we know that. And uh, Toronto now five points ahead of Tampa games in hand. Toronto's probably almost certainly going to have the home seed. And l- look, last year that didn't matter. And Tampa went into Toronto in game seven and they won that series. But I am legitimately, I think I'll get a better idea after t- Tampa plays the Islanders twice, like I said. But uh, Tampa, to me, really, really, I don't know. I don't know if they've got it this year. They they look tired. I know this is, like, dangerous to say because, like, I think they looked kind of like this towards the end of last year as well. And then they were able to, you know, beat Toronto in the first round and then beat Florida in the second round. I didn't think they were going to beat the Panthers in the second round last year with how good the Panthers were. And then they just, you know, like destroyed them. So this Tampa team is incredibly capable. And we know that. Uh, and Vasilevsky, um, they're very similar to the Islanders, Tampa. They have a higher ceiling, probably. Um, but yeah, Tampa Bay, I can't. I need to see the next week or two and like get an idea of how engaged they are. Um, I think I'm probably going to pick Toronto in that series as of today. Like, I don't even think Toronto is playing that great. And the way they played against the Islanders was not encouraging because like Steve Dangle said, like everybody says they played a like a, an Islanders team. That's basically playing playoff games right now because these games are basically playoff games to us. And they got steamrolled. And the Islanders don't even have Barzi, and they missed uh, Brock after the first period. Like you can't get rolled by the Islanders um, seven to two. I like it wasn't even the back end of a back to back for Tampa or for Toronto. So that hey, that is for me. Like Toronto looks like the same old team that keeps choking away series. I am not high on either of those teams right now, so I'm very curious to see. Toronto, Tampa as two teams that I'm not super high on. Um, Boston, you know, uh, against Pitt, I think they're, if they, I think Boston doesn't want to play the Islanders. Um, I don't, I don't think Jari is going to goalie Boston out <laughs> of the playoffs. Um, and I think Boston knows that, you know, Sorokin has the best chance of goalieing them out of the first round. You're basically just trying to avoid the best goalie of the three teams that are pretty much still in it. I guess to touch on uh, super quickly, like the Devils, I agree with you. It's not um, super far-fetched for them to still win the division, but I do think Carolina is going to win it. Uh, I'm also kind of hoping for a Jersey Rangers series because we need that in, in the metropolitan area. I think that would be really good for the sport in the area. You know, we had first take a few weeks ago talk about how hockey doesn't count as a sport. So I think that would be really important in the metro area to have, you know, the Islanders haven't played the Rangers in a playoff series since 94. Um, I think it would be nice for Jersey and the Rangers to do battle and have New York City, uh, you know, in the metro area, see how much fun that series could be. Because I think there'd be a lot of goals. Um, I, I would, I personally right now, I think I would favor the Devils. Um, I think they're a little bit more potent. No, uh, that's your eye under bias. I, I, I don't know. Look, uh, um, I will, I will go back to this until the day we die. Cause we're going to die on the same day. Um, okay. it's, are you uh, threatening me? No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it does sound like that. Um, no, uh, I can't remember what, if it was, I think it was two seasons ago. It might've been last season though, uh, where you did the, expect like your uh your standings like uh in the beginning of the season like what you th- your predictions for the standings by the end of the season yeah and you had islanders at the first <laughs> and you had rangers at the bottom in my defense, <laughs> and the rangers set it up like doing amazing and the islanders didn't even make the playoffs <laughs> but in my defense several people picked the islanders to win the division that year mm-hmm. i should have been smarter um i got caught up in the media it was your I, islanders bias bro so this even, is why well, just to just to counteract the islanders bias i'm go if you know like assuming the rangers and jersey play each other like i'm going rangers i don't want to but that's just what you know i'm i'm just gonna add important context which is the islanders were coming off of going to game seven against tampa and had the same roster and it just didn't work and look uh last year like whether it was Trot's 
running out of magic, whether it was the schedule, whether it was COVID. Look, a lot of things happened. Um, and, and also, I think, you know, like I said with Tampa, sometimes when you play a lot of playoff games and, and uh, you know, over the course of a couple of years, it affects you for a season. Uh, the Kings had that. The Kings had, um, you know, seasons after their cups that were pretty tough, even with a, like on paper, a good roster, because it's a lot of hockey. You know, it is a second full season, really. If you go far in the playoffs, it's ridiculous. Uh, you have a significantly shorter offseason than a lot of other teams, and that's why it's so hard to win consecutive cups uh, and, and why, you know, it should be marveled that Tampa could even get to three in a row um, the last three years. Um, but hey, it's not quite four in a row. So. But not quite four. <laughs> not quite. Um, we'll see what happens. This yeah. year, okay. <laughs> One, the last thing I want to touch on in terms of the playoff chase, uh, the wild card chase, uh, I do think the Islanders will be there as said by my 70%, you know, odds. Um, Florida, I mean, if Pittsburgh loses tonight, they're down right now, they will have the same amount of games played, and Pittsburgh will only be one point up. So that is a complete crapshoot still. I think tonight has a big bearing because, again, it's like what playoff teams can you beat? You know, the Islanders, the Panthers, and and, uh, Pittsburgh, you got to beat the bad teams. And then you got to pick off games against the good teams. Um, the Islanders beat Toronto. Pittsburgh beat Colorado. And unfortunately for the, the Panthers, they they lost to Toronto tonight. And it was pretty bad. And they were probably, honestly, unfortunately for Sterling, I think the Islanders stirred up Toronto. <laughs> um, the Leafs could not lose that game after, you know, getting shellacked by the Islanders. Um, so I think... Uh, it was a tough spot there for for uh, Florida because um, I'm sure Sheldon Keefe was screaming his head off in the locker room after that game. But, um, yeah, I God, I think I, I, against my wishes, I think Pittsburgh's going to find a way to be that eight seed. Um, if the Islanders can avoid Boston in round one, uh, I would love that. I Look, it's not that big a difference, and I'm not – gonna go crazy either way i mean i'm just gonna be happy to be in because of the the path that we've taken i'm just happy to be here and i do think you know like any of the four playoff series that the islanders played i guess five if you count the panthers play in one um yeah i think the islanders were probably favored in the panthers one and maybe not another one after that um the washington one i think people were 50 50 on and then the rest the islanders were underdogs so the islanders don't have to go into a series as favorites to win we know that. So, you know, like I, as much as I'm going to, I'm going to do my bracket for the Islanders or uh, Pittsburgh just tied it. Uh, my look, the Islanders have a shot against anybody if they play the way they are right now. Um, I guess you, you could say if the, if the, uh, the top six gets going, because the bottom six is, is going right now. And uh, I want to give credit to uh, our guy who I haven't been a big fan of this year, but I think he's been better recently and he's growing with the team is Romanov. Um, so I, I've liked this game recently, big hit the other day, big hip check. Um, I think he's going to be a good playoff type defender. Um, yeah, so I, I'm very optimistic. I think we've, the East is a gauntlet, a gauntlet. I, I think none of, nobody in the East is going to be a sitting duck. Uh, I, like, I, I think Boston's obviously going to be heavy favorites against anyone, but I, I like, I don't know if we're going to see a sweep in round one in the East. I'd be, I'd be shocked if we saw one. Uh, Cause I like, even I guess Boston would be the most likely, but like Boston, like, look, it's, it's not easy to be the same team four times in a row. So, and Pittsburgh super experienced. If they're the ones in Crosby's going to win them a game. But so that's my, my like East recap. Well, besides when we get revenge on Carolina for 2019, yeah. Then we'll that would feel great. But I I am a little weirdly excited about this year, sort of to me feeling like a 2013 or 2015 type run, where like even with Trots, when we fell into the last playoff spot, people were recognizing like it's Barry Trots, like they could be super dangerous or whatever. This season, I I really have no expectations going into the playoffs. So That's the best. 
That's I, the I'm, best spot you could be in. <laughs> yeah. If they win a series, I'm going to be thrilled. If we lose, whatever, we have the off season to get better. And it feels a lot different from recent memory. And yeah, I know it sounds pretty bad, but yeah, I'm just excited to be there. Uh, also, a uh, couple other things to comment on, um, just to set the record straight, until we clinch, Florida is, I mean, obviously Pittsburgh, but enemy number one to me. Like, I'm cheering so hard against them in all their games, so good for us for stirring up Toronto. And then one other thing I wanted to comment on was Tampa and how they don't look so great right now. Uh, you have to remember that come playoff time when they play the Leafs, this is not a team who plays like Carolina or the Islanders in the playoffs. I think you you might see the same thing as last year where even though Tampa looked pretty dead, I don't know if the Leafs have figured it out yet. It's about time they did, but you never know. Um and last year, they went far because they played the Leafs in the first round. We didn't have it in them. Florida in the second round. I think we kind of knew at the time during the first round that Florida was looking like frauds, uh, having their insane season and then mightily struggling against a terrible Washington playoff team. So, right. yeah, they had a good conference final win against uh, the Rangers, but... I think they went pretty far due to some nice circumstances. Uh, This year, they'll play probably Boston in the second round. So Mm -hmm. I think that's probably when their streak is ending. Yeah. Here's a fun question. Um, Or not fun, depending on your your opinion. I don't think it's totally impossible because we talk about, like, you know, teams that are built for the playoffs, and I think – we agree that the Islanders have, you know, the the playoff formula, and and, and Sterling, I tend to agree with you. Um, you know, I think I I, I want to be that guy that's like right when Toronto finally wins, but you might be right that Tampa just they play like the Islanders, but they have a higher ceiling because their talent is so good in the top six, and they know what they want. Like when they go out and they get guys. You know, they they overpay for guys like Brandon Hagel and Tanner Janot, but they know how to get the best out of them. And those are the guys in the playoffs that are nightmares for for your top six and your your Willie Nylanders and your um, Mitch Marners. Guys that, you know, I, I feel like, honestly, I was thinking about this the other day. If the Leafs lose again in the first round this year, you know, and it's it's like you said, like similar to how um, how it happened last year with Tampa. And if it if it goes the same way, like if I'm uh, Dubas, if I'm Kyle Dubas, I am immediately calling the Caps and trading for Tom Wilson because like that's what they need. I know they've been trying to do that. That you get your Nola Charis and you get your Luke Shens, but maybe it needs to be more of a core guy. That's a fu energy. You know, like the Bruins had Marchand. And, um, you know, the Islanders have Martin and Clutterbuck. I, for the Leafs, like, yeah, it, it's kind of – it's periphery guys, you know? It's not – Austin Matthews isn't going to scrap and uh, John Tavares is not going to scrap. And basically nobody in their top six is going to scrap. Mm. They might need to sacrifice a little bit of talent in the offseason for grit. A little bit. Like, I'm not saying – I'm not, like – that guy that's like, it's all great. The skill doesn't win in the playoffs. We He's can probably... give them for free Ross Johnston. <laughs> yeah. He's all yours. <laughs> yeah, sure. They can have him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I think I think Toronto, the, look, it's hard. It's hard when they lose games like they did to the Islanders the other night. And like Horvat, the Islanders score seven goals and Horvat's not even part of it. And Brock wasn't part of it because he wasn't part of most of the game. But like, Man, that is a worrying loss if you're a Leaf fan. Um, but yeah, I don't remember what the initial question was. But uh, I don't know. Anyway, moving on the Western <laughs> Conference. <laughs> Any? I, what, why don't we just end it on the Western Conference? We we ignore them a lot. We're on the opposite side of the country. So, um, uh, and then. I guess maybe that and there's some any closing thoughts or anything, you know. So uh 
I haven't been paying much attention to the West. I don't know if you guys have, you know, watched a few games or, or anything. So any uh any thoughts about standings, what playoffs might look like? Um, I I'll yeah. take care of a couple of teams. I I love watching Edmonton. Uh, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl are unreal. Mm. I think this year they're out in the first round. I they're like Pittsburgh to me. The, I don't know what's wrong with their goaltending. What happened to Jack Campbell? Stuart Skinner is no better. I can't see them beating LA this time around. They're they're gonna have to score ten goals a game, which they didn't do last playoffs against LA. So I think they're out in round one. Vegas, I thought it was a bit of an odd choice to get Jonathan Quick as a goaltender come mm-hmm. playoff time. Yeah, he has the two cups, but he's also one of the worst goaltenders this season. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they got upset early on. Uh, Seattle is a weird team for me because their goaltending also isn't great, but I don't know. I think they might be able to get into the second round. Um, obviously, they're in a wild card spot now, so if they lose in the first, whatever. I think your two scary teams to watch out for are Dallas and Colorado, and I think Colorado has it in them again to move on to the final. Dallas will be a great series if they play each other, but if they beat Dallas in the first round, then they're playing probably Minnesota round two, who is having major trouble scoring goals. And then in the third round, if they play in LA, I can't see how they lose to them. So they're my favorite in the West, which they deserve to be having won the cup last year. Mm. Yeah. No, the West is really interesting because the East is a gauntlet and the West is uh, just a huge question mark. Um you know, I like the three team. The three teams currently in central spots, I think, are the most qualified playoff teams. Um, you know, like you said with Vegas, uh, Jonathan Quick's been uh, a, a nice surprise for them so far. And sometimes uh, all it takes is to be woken up and to have that chip on your shoulder. You know, everybody's talking about that with Aaron Rodgers, with the Jets. And Jonathan Quick, you know, didn't want to get traded out of L.A., gets traded to Columbus. And my goodness – What an awful feeling it must be for Kings fans with the possibility of facing Jonathan Quick in the playoffs if you win in round one and and have to play Vegas if they win. Uh, I agree with you, Sterling, that I I, like even though Vegas, you know, right now they're the one seed in, in the Western Conference and they would play Winnipeg in round one. And I do think Vegas would be favored there, but it's not ridiculous to think Connor Hellebuck just goalies them out of the playoffs. There's not a lot of in, in the baseball playoffs, I tend to think about rotations because pitching wins in the playoffs. And in hockey, I tend to think, like, there's not a lot of teams that don't have an elite goalie that go far. Um, you know, like, you can debate Darcy Kemper last year if he's elite or not. He's probably not, but he is still very good. And also that team was so good around him, it, was, it made it less of a thing. In the West, there's not a lot of goalies that are going to be like, oh, you got goalied. Um <laughs> You know, Connor Hellbuck could always do that, but I, I just don't know if this Winnipeg team's well-rounded enough for it to matter. Um, other than that, like, who's in goal for these? I mean, Philip Gustafson, Gustafson has, like, emerged as as pretty good this year for Minnesota. Um, not just pretty good, very good. And Jay Gottinger with um, Dallas. Um, he's been a little bit cold recently, but, you know, he's young. He can warm back up play, come playoff time. I'm not worried about, like, too many minutes on him he's like 23 years old um but i i think my favorite team in the west right now you know it was dallas for a good while and i am a little bit worried about the fact that they've literally like they a lot of they've 14 overtime loss points overtime shootout loss points that is so they've only won 38 they've only won like half their games uh they've won 38 games of their 71 For reference, the Islanders have one fewer win. Like, they might be frauds based off of, like, wow, like, you still lost those games. Like, that's why, like, in recent years, I've I've stopped really worrying about the overtime loss, and I'm just thinking of that as a loss now because you lost the game. 
you know, the shootout's a little bit more of a crap shoot, but like overtime is overtime. Um, I, I think they might be on fraud watch. And also if Dallas has to play Colorado round one, I, I wouldn't want to play Colorado round one. So I am going to agree with you. I, I, I think Colorado is going to be most people's picks uh, in the West. Uh, if I had to choose one other team, I think Minnesota. Uh, it's weird to say that, and I could be wrong. You know, it's one of those teams that just always blows it in the playoffs. But Kaprizov got hurt, right? And they have responded much like the Islanders did to um, Barzi getting hurt. Matthew Boldy is on fire right now. And, you know, with Phil Gustafson and net, you also have Mark andre Fleury, who I know in the playoffs has been like a checkered, you know, sometimes he's great, sometimes he's terrible. But I would still rather have that possibility than like, you know, Tristan Jari and King Peter Smith. So, um, yeah, Colorado's, for me, favored in the West. Uh, Minnesota will probably, for me, be their biggest uh, rival. I would very much like to see the Kraken win a series. Um, but right now they would play Minnesota. And I, like I just said, I, I think Minnesota is my backup team in the West. So um, in the West, it, yeah, Colorado, Minnesota are, are, are my two teams. Uh, I'm very excited to see LA and Edmonton go at it again because I think they make for an interesting matchup. Um, LA's goaltending isn't great. So I, I think I might favor Edmonton there just off sheer Connor McDavid will. Um, but even then, like, is Edmonton – Edmonton might be good enough to go to the final just off of Connor McDavid's back. I don't know if they're good enough to win it all just off of him. Um so I do think an Eastern team is going to win the cup this year. I don't think that's crazy to say, even if Colorado gets there, you know, if they play Boston, I think Boston would be favored. Yeah. They, obviously the Islanders would beat everybody in the West. Which is yeah. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. I um, do want, hmm. yeah. No, go ahead. I do want to quickly talk about Calgary and how I really feel bad for them because they seem to be having the same season we had last year. And that was miserable. Uh, I'd say they had pretty high expectations this year. And randomly, our Barry Trot system kind of just died and no one had good production. It seems the same with Daryl Sutter. And Jonathan Huberto was like the third best player in the league last year in terms of points. And that's fallen off a cliff. And they're going to probably... Get- probably be the best team who misses the playoffs just like we were so I keep seeing a lot of similarities and I feel your pain but next year you'll probably win the cup because we will this year (laughs) (laughs) yeah Calgary Um, it like it just seems like it's been a very very difficult year because like they've got agents talking about how it sucks they were talking about like waving Mackenzie Weger at some point. Um, yeah, just bad vibes. Generally bad vibes around Calgary right now, which is a shame. They're like one of the teams in the West that I like tend to pull for. For me in the West, um, like in neutral years, I tend to root for like Winnipeg and uh, Calgary. Uh, probably like a uniform thing. But I also, uh, <laughs> I really admire the Winnipeg fan base, especially being like a small town team that packs their arena. Um, and the whiteout is legendary. So I really, really like Winnipeg and I tend to root for them in the West and I will root for them this year. I'll be rooting for the Kraken, uh, with Jeb, with Everly, <laughs> Everly. um, yeah. So I'm going to be rooting for the wildcard teams in the West. And, uh, you know, even though I didn't, you know, predict it, um, look, the West is open enough that like, it's not crazy to think one of those teams goes on a run. All right. Um, cool. I agree. So uh, <laughs> uh, thank you very much for joining us in this very sleepy episode of uh, Belmont Bunch. I did my best. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's... Want to do a hot or not before we're done? Uh, of course I want to do a hot or not. Um, <laughs> uh, wait, hot or not for the Islanders play, players? Play, yeah, player. Islanders team. Okay. Yeah. I got the team up on the screen. Uh, I'm gonna say just keeping with the uh, the way we've been doing it this episode, Sterling. Why don't you go first? If you if you have if you already know who you're gonna pick for hot or not, 
for the Islanders right. this season. Go. Yeah, I got a couple. I'll do recently. Um, I've got Hudson Fashing, Pierre Engvall, and Alex Romanov are my hot as of late. Um, you know what? You could throw Brock Nelson in there. He's always there. And then for my not, I'm going to say I'll only go with one player, Noah Dobson. I think the team's been really good as of late, so I don't have too many people to trash on. But uh, Dobson's been, well, disappointing to say the least compared to last year. I uh, still can't really figure out the defense. Um, some big giveaways as of late. And somehow, I think come playoff time, he might be our weakest link defensively. I- I- I've been kind of impressed with Bull Duke coming up. So uh, I think Dobson will be my not. Those four hots just because of their production as long as Engvall doesn't score first if he scores second or third we're good but we always lose when he scores first yeah I am uh, like pretty much in full agreement with everything you just said just to try to add to what you said I'm going to put I know it's one game but look you you said all the guys I would have said for hot uh (laughs) and Dobby would be the one not for me I I know like uh, the points haven't come for the top six recently, but I, I don't think it's been um, like the top six has been bad. I think I saw that Bo Horvat shooting 1% in the last two weeks. That's not going to keep up. Like things are going to level out. So um, I have hope with Dobby um, because Bull Duke the other night, Bull Duke looks confident enough out there uh, as his partner that Dobby, I think it made Dobby look better. And, um, you know, it gave him a chance to be a little bit more offensive the other night. And I am really hopeful that even with the Sebastian Ajo injury and, you know, Ajo has been like a a decent player for us this year. But um, I don't think we missed much the other day with with Bolduc in instead. And, uh, you know, that that probably says a lot about Bolduc. I think it says a lot about the Islanders defensive depth, Uh, even though the Islanders aren't a highly rated system. Like they've just called guys up and those guys have been decent in small bursts, like Watherspoon, like Bull Duke. Um there was a third, wasn't there? Well, there was a third guy. Oh, I mean Solo, it hasn't worked as well for. It. But the other two guys, it's worked pretty well for um when they've come up. So encouraged by Bull Duke. Um, would love to see him get playoff experience this year. Um, it would be kind of like Ryan Pollock against the Panthers in like 15, 16, you know, this guy comes up, maybe he can add something. Um, And that playoff experience I think was invaluable to him. Like it was to Scott Mayfield against the Capitals in 2013 or 2012, 13. Oh no, sorry. That was 14, 15. Yeah. Um, But yeah. So um, I'm yeah. Very encouraged by the play of Hudson fashing Cal Cal Clutterbuck. I will give my number one hot spot because like I said, Hudson fashing was starting to make him look irrelevant. Uh, it turns out we can have two good guys in the lineup at the same time. So they, they're both playing and they're both scoring. I have, I have one addition to hot players. Uh, so if you, you can sort by uh face off percentage win <laughs> okay. on player stats. <laughs> so there is a player with 100% face-off percentage wins and that's right you guessed it it's ross johnston so oh, really? he probably has one face-off and <laughs> he's played i think uh was it 16 games uh how dare you bring his name it was 16 game. games <laughs> so i mean hey he has a minus he's only a minus one on a plus minus so mm. i mean so he's my hot player. I don't think he's played in like the past 20 games. <laughs> no, yeah. Honestly, yeah. like he, I, they could have sent him down. I wouldn't have noticed. But uh, yeah, so he's my hot player. He's probably doing doing the Lord's work there in uh, Bridgeport, you know. <laughs> Do you have a not Beating up or... AHL players. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say, Sterling? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a not player or just uh, one? Of... No, well, this is like if I had to really go to a punching bag, and again, this is just looking at the player stats in the aggregate. It would be Scott Mayfield because he has the most penalty points. Mm. 77 penalty minutes, um, which is and the next is Matt Martin. So you have more than Matt Martin, you know, yeah. and he like he's obviously an enforcer. So uh, 
I don't think it's been as many bad penalties. They're probably more defensive zone penalties, you know, like where it's either take the penalty or, you know, you give up a good, really good scoring chance. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. They've been pretty Uh, disciplined recently outside of the LA game. mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Just to bring up three players who don't fit in either, but are fun bringing up. Matt Martin has been sitting on his career high and point total for like Mm -hmm. weeks now. This is the week he breaks it. So yeah. number 20, here it comes. Uh, today in practice, allegedly, Lane was doing a thing where if you miss the net on a shot, everyone does two push-ups. So everyone must hate Ryan Pollock now. <laughs> and then <laughs> third, uh, I'm very impressed with Lane for keeping Bailey out of the lineup. Mm-hmm. The team's been hot. He's not in. He hasn't been in. And I really am interested now to see what happens to him. Maybe Lou actually buys him out or trades him this summer if Lane just keeps refusing to play him. So mm-hmm. good job, Lane, for fixing Barry's big issue. Yeah. Well, I, and, and like, look, I, I know he scored the other night, so it's obviously a really opportune time to talk about it. But I, I really like Simon Holmstrom's game. Uh, I know there have been some people – I've heard him be called – the second coming of Josh Bailey by like other <laughs> people. And I, I, I don't see it because I, I, now look, it's been a while. I have been watching as long as Bailey's been playing. Um, but I really, really like, I, I feel like it's been the last few years that like my eye for the game has really improved. And I really like what I see at a home shroom. Uh, the stat, the, like the advanced stats say that he's like the best defensive forward on the team if he can start pitching in offensively even a little bit, he's going to be a really, really valuable, like not like, you know, he's playing next to Barzi and he's amazing, but like just a valuable depth guy, not even depth, like middle six forward that can add um, defense and maybe a little bit of offense. I'm excited for him. Um, He's very young. So there is room to grow offensively. Um, Yeah. And like you said, Lane Lambert, uh, two push-ups is a hilarious amount of push-ups. <laughs> it's like they're NHL players. It's two push-ups. I'm like, it's great because it's just inconvenient. <laughs> like it, that, that's what it should be. It's like annoying. You miss the net, you should be annoyed. Um, so I gotta give him credit. Look, the power play I think will come along. That's obviously the Achilles heel right now. Um, when Barzi comes back, I think you'll see the the numbers improve there because there was chemistry between he and uh, he and Horvat. Um, so yeah, optimism is high. Um, man, if, if they get Barzy back and the top six start scoring, this is a really, really scary team with Ilya and Ned. Like, wow. I can't believe how far we've come. This has been a really fun, interesting year, uh, in terms of like coming back from like what seems like the ether. Yeah. Um, Okay, so on that very, very, very optimistic note, I have one more note. Tom has one more note. Pierre Engvall <laughs> looks like a Twitch streamer. Who? Oh, yeah. Pierre Engvall, I think, looks like a Twitch streamer with his with his hair. Uh, he looks like a Fortnite character. Oh, I'm trying to pull up his, his hair. picture. <laughs> Just he he looks like a cartoon character of a handsome looking dude. He looks like the hero in Mega Mind. Okay, so Tom has a crush on Angball. Great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I look. I simply am saying. <laughs> hey, not, if he you... asks me out, we go out for some coffee. It's okay. What's the <laughs> big deal? Cute. <laughs> He's cute. <laughs> Take that, Stall Brothers. <laughs> um. Okay. So. Uh, all right. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Um. Stay tuned for when we post the next episode in a week or two. Thank yeah. you very much, Sterling, again, for being our our very knowledgeable uh, voice <laughs> of reason and continuing yeah. guest. Thanks for having me. If you know, you know, by next week, we'll be in a playoff spot. All right. And if I we're not... Like James, <laughs> like to thank what? James for bringing... Uh, for always having Brock in the background. I really yeah, my one jersey. Well, my one player jersey. As you guys know, I have a, approximately 400 jerseys. And um, I was saying the other day, if I got a new one, that was an Islander one, which I don't need, it would probably be Brock because he deserves it.
That's exactly how I feel. And, you know, I felt like he was a late bloomer in his career. You know, mm-hmm. I relate to that, you know, because that gives me hope that I still might bloom in my career. <laughs> you <laughs> oh, know, that reminds me. Yeah, I tweeted this and I thought it was clever. So now I'm going to say it on the pod. I turned 27 last week, um, which in NHL GM, uh, NHL GM, in NHL franchise mode terms. Uh, so, like, when a player is a prospect up from like 16 to like 26, you have potential. And then at 27, <laughs> potential's gone and you're just exact what you are. <laughs> so, my potential went from medium elite. I believe everyone has medium elite potential. Um, and now I am, I said low, low bottom six. I'm going to be a little bit nice and say I'm exact mm, top nine. Mm-hmm. So there's still room to grow, but I'm very, very tired and I don't think I'll do it. <laughs> well, well, what's what's great, though, is that you're not an, uh you know, professional ice hockey player. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, but I mean, your like, potential is still there in other yeah. avenues of life. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I'm going to make you think you're still going to make it. What's up? You think you still you think you're still going to get signed? You think you're still going to like have the like, people are scouting you? Let me tell you, uh, it was a tough deck hockey season. Uh, my team went six and four and we're going to the playoffs. Nice. Scored, Congrats. I scored in back-to-back games earlier in the year. And I thought like, oh, is this going to be like, am I going to be good? And then I, <laughs> I, I, I uh, finished the last seven games without a point. So no. <laughs> <That's my answer. laughs> if you got less than five points all season, talk to Lou. Lots of money coming up for you. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. look for that like, Lou would give me, and this could this could work out for either side. The Scott Mayfield contract, where it's like four years, one point five million, and it's like, well, if you suck, that kind of stinks for us, but it's not so bad that it's awful. But if you're great, it's great for us, and it sucks for you. So, <laughs> I mean, it's still one point five million. I'll take it, Lou. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, now there might actually be too much depth on the Islanders for me to jokingly say I could be there. How much do the uh, how much do like the water bottle people make, you know, and like, like just like team staff that aren't like part of the coaching staff? I'd have to ask. I, I, I don't even know if you would know, but I'll ask my brother since he's uh, working for the Islanders. All right. Stay tuned. Yeah. We should have your brother on. Yeah, he doesn't like talking. Mm. To me, in <laughs> we'll particular. force him. I think it would be fun. I He's he's uh, like. He doesn't like to do things until he does them. And then he's like, that was pretty cool. That's fair. We we peer pressured him into fantasy hockey. Now he loves it. So does that also make him Mr. Bunch or how does that work? (laughs) Oh, that's a good question. Um, Can't even see, say Bunch Jr. Because that would insinuate that I'm his dad. (laughs) So Bunch the second, I don't know. I I, I don't even (laughs) know. I'll come up with something. Yeah, he could he could be uh, stinky. How about that? <laughs> That's his uh, his fantasy hockey team is called Nick Stinky. <laughs> um, Sterling, any any possible guests that you would uh, consider having on? Any other Islander fans? I will let you know. All right. Yeah, don't put him on the spot. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> open open call during the pod. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to shout out my friend alex yeah if he could if you're watching this <laughs> also, you know what we'll do i will ask my brother sparky wants to be on the pod and we'll force him to come oh, on. oh you mean the actual mascot yeah the actual yeah. Sparky. oh it my god really so I, i'm not gonna first of all i don't remember the guy's actual name and i don't I say that on the podcast <laughs> don't, don't talk <laughs> um no no look i wouldn't do that um but it's funny because my brother um you know he as I said, he works uh, on the ice crew at some of the games, um, and you know, Sp- Sparky, like the the ice crew guys, know him by his actual name. And I'm just gonna say a random name because I don't remember what the name of the actual guy is. But like, you know, you just my brother's standing there, and he just hears behind him, like, "Here comes Sparky," and my brother will just be like, "Hey, Joe." It's like <laughs> do that for the kids. That's like going up to and being like, "Hey, Dad." <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna be like he has a name. His name yeah. is Joe <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, it's. I mean, and they get to see the behind the scenes, so they get to see Sparky talk with the costume, 
And then you can reenact the I think you should leave sketch and be like, don't talk. The mouth doesn't move. <laughs> you can't talk. Um, OK, on this note, we'll see what we'll see what stays in from what we just talked about <laughs> after <laughs> editing. But um, on that note, thank you again for a final time for watching everybody again. Thank you, Sterling. Thank you, Tom. Thank there you. It goes again myself. threatening, saying it's the final time. It is the <laughs> final time. All right. Come to my house and Goodbye. <laughs>